All right, guys, tonight is our team surge for Inspire Beauty. We just got off of the Beach Body Surge with Carl Deichler. He hosted a surge with Chris Downing. He also had five star coach from Canada, Kim Fitzpatrick, who is married to one of the top coaches, Jamie Fitzpatrick. Patrick, and she. Uh, they also had Jessica Bowser Nelson on. She is the one with the crazy messy bun that I just love from Sean Week. You probably know her from that, but she's been a coach for eight years in the network, and she was on also sharing some takeaways. They also did a little bit of a product announcement that we will talk about here in a second. Um, but I just wanted to welcome you in tonight and just kind of go over the objective overall. And then I'm going to let Amanda and Becca take it away and just share for a brief moment about their experience at Summit and some of their big ahas that they had. But the objective of tonight is to get together as a team, whether you're listening to this as a recording or whether you are on live with us, it is to mastermind and it is to game. Um, we're going to talk through a little bit of Summit but we're also going to discuss the surge and what we can do to game plan moving forward. We have not only a successful finish to July, um, a successful August and Team Cup month, but also how can we continue this momentum through the rest of 2017 um, and just kind of ignite Inspire Beauty, ignite our own businesses, and um, just ultimately help as many people as we can. So without further ado, I'm going to toss it over to either Amanda or Becca, whoever wants to jump in first and share with us guys, not only your experience of Summit and how that inspired you, uh, both of you went to your very first Summit, but also some of those top takeaways and ahas that we can have Do you want to go? Do you want me to go? <laughs> um, I can go. Okay. All right. So before I ever left for Summit, I was kind of struggling with my business. I was trying to get things off the ground, and I was having a hard time with that. And I was starting to feel, like, frustrated and, frustrated and defeated. And after the whole Summit experience, um, I kind of got the boost that I needed and now I have the motivation to like keep pushing and keep trying to get things going. Um, one of the big takeaways from one of the talks that we had was to approach the business like a marathon. Um, like you're in it for the long haul when you sign up for a coach just commit to it, commit to the whole thing. Like if you sign up to run a marathon, you're not gonna say, well, I'll just give it a try and see how it goes and then maybe not finish. Like if you sign up for a marathon, you're probably gonna try to finish. Um, and it's hard work and you're gonna have to push through walls, but it's worth it in the end. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to share I shared this in a post in the group earlier, but I'll say it again. Um, one of the things that really hit home with me was that Beachbody truly believes in bettering everybody on the inside and out, and they want everybody to have the opportunity to be a part of the team, regardless of their age or like people of all shapes and sizes all across the world. That's all I have. Awesome. That's awesome. I actually, where you ended, I want to start. Is <laughs> the belief kind of thing, and just um, and I know I everybody should go watch Nicole's takeaways that she posted earlier because she stole a lot of mine. So I'm going to try to do other ones too. But just the idea that um, just believe. Like I just don't think I ever really had full belief. Like I did. I liked the products. I liked the workouts. I love the community, but just fully believing that this really was something so real. Like I can't even express it's so hard to like actually give it to everybody that wasn't there, but being in the midst of 20,000 people that have the same goals as you, the same desires, the same wants, like they all have different reasons, but the core of it is exactly the same. Like that was, I think the biggest powerful thing for me to realize like that's kind of where my shift came from is actually being in the midst of just 20,000 people just wholeheartedly believing in what this business is and just hearing Carl Deichler and all the like amazing coaches that I look up to like speaking that, you know, like I'm a really good judge of character. I feel like 
um, a pretty good intuition about people. And like, there was nothing in genuine about any of them. They were just so authentic, genuine people. Um, and so that was just a huge thing. So like, I believe hundred percent, um, that's definitely a huge thing that I took away that there's a community here just being with the teammates, like, <laughs> and I met everybody except for Amanda, but like, we became like a, you know, pals and like, it was just awesome going through such a life changing experience together. So I'm so excited for all of y'all that are going next year. Cause it's going to be a blast. You need to go. Um, and then two last things. Um, I basically, there was a talk and I forget exactly where it is. I have to go back through my notes and see where it happened, but essentially just finding the belief that I'm a hundred percent perfect how I am right now. And that improving myself is a way to fall in love with myself. That was something like, it was literally like, I like mind blowing. Cause that's something I've struggled with almost my entire life. <laughs> believing that I'm a perfectionist OCD, like it's caused a lot of issues in my life. And so I really feel like just hearing that come from stage from people I really respect, it really just flipped a switch that I'm hundred percent okay where I am right now. I'm perfect where I am. And I can fall in love with myself by trying to improve myself. So I think that's really been my motivator this week to keep momentum going. And then this, the, another aha moment that Nicole talked about, but I have to talk about it because it's like crazy changed everything in my perspective. Um, Richard was Darren Hardy when he was talking, but he said, you know, like you will suffer in life. Like that's no choice. Like it, you will have suffering, but you get to choose if you suffer with regret or if you suffer with discipline. And like, that was just mind blowing. It's like that literally that's everything comes down to that. Like, are you going to suffer with regret, which is how I've been living my life for most of my life? Or am I going to suffer with discipline and know that it's getting me to a better place? So I think that's crazy, amazing. And just, and Nicole hit it on the head and um, everybody else, but like finding your why is so important. And I don't think I had that before I had this experience. So that's really what kind of gets your gears going. So go next year. It's amazing. We'll keep sharing takeaways and I have my notes. I just have to finish typing them up so I can share them with the page. Awesome. Thank you ladies so much. So honestly, I have to be like, I have to be completely honest with you guys. I've gone to summit every year since I've been a coach and last year Kayla went with me and, and I got to witness Kayla's eyes open at an event like this. And it was really, really powerful. Um, but our team just wasn't in like such a great place at the end of summit. And I wasn't in a great place at the end of summit coming out of it to really build some momentum and uh, push through that. And so it's just been so it's just been such an awesome experience to witness Amanda and Becca and Nicole and even Charlie and their eyes just open. Um, it was really cool at this particular summit because I got to meet a lot of people who follow me from other teams and got to come up to me and meet me in person. And, um, and I got to meet them in person and just getting to cheer on other people in their businesses and, and see that, like Becca said, we're just not so different after all. I love that you said that there's nothing ingenuine about this company because network marketing in and of itself has gotten a bad reputation over the years for being icky and salesy and maybe like a pyramid scheme. And there are plenty of people who do network marketing in a bad way, in my personal opinion. And I loved that you guys got to see that this company is truly about bettering yourself from the inside out. And, uh, and then with that, just the sky is the freaking limit. And so this last week at summit, I mean, the biggest thing for me was that there wasn't anything and we're all, everybody on here is a color guard person. So you guys all get it, but, um, there wasn't a single thing that was said at summit that I haven't said to you before. Um, in fact, when Darren Hardy was up there, I could recite his whole thing, honestly, because I love the man and he's a mentor from afar. I do all of his Darren dailies. I have read all of his books and his, his, um, his keynote speech that he gave was actually really similar to the same one he gave us three years ago. And so I could like, I was sitting here like writing and thinking I could just, I could recite what he's about to say. It's not about me though. It's about getting to hear someone else say it and then it clicks and the light bulb goes off. So it's really cool to get to watch those light bulbs moment happen. And I'm really excited because we've got Kaylee and Jessica both on the call live with us right now who also took the plunge to invest in themselves, invest in their business, invest in just everything, invest in bettering yourself. Um, so it comes down though, guys, to that decision 
to join, but then the commitment you make once you do that. And so that's kind of what we're going to talk about for the rest of this call is that commitment because you can be on fire after an event like this and we all are and, and people who weren't even at the event are on fire and everybody's getting excited. But now what do you do? We made the decision to go to summit. We made the decision to maybe go to next year's summit. We've made some decisions to take our business to a new level and set some goals. Maybe we've made a decision to do shift shop next week and do that for three weeks and really hone in on our fitness and our nutrition and really show people what that looks like. So we've made these decisions, but the next step, and this is where most people lose it, is the commitment. And how do you take that decision that you made and how do you bridge it to the ultimate success or the end result you want? How do you bridge the two? Well, it's a long road of commitment. And Darren Hardy says it best, it's unsexy, it's mundane. It is like, I tell people, if you came to my house, I mean, I want you guys to like look at my lap right now. Frankie's been sick all day. And this is like the position I've been in. Like, I feel like, kind of feel like a mom, Jessica, because I feel like I can't feel my legs because like he's been in this position all day and I can't move and, um, and he's been puking all over my carpet. So I've had to clean that up all day, guys. But the thing is, and what was my point anyway? Oh, if you came to my house, it's unsexy. Like it's not, it's like literally my checklist is very rote every day of what I go through. The steps I do each day, it's very, it's very boring. Okay? It can look like, really, that's all you do all day, Brittany? Like where's all the fun stuff? Like Instagram and Facebook looks like you have so much fun. So where's that stuff? The truth is, I work my butt off every day doing the rote, mundane, unsexy behaviors. I'm supposed to be at a meeting right now. Right? Yeah. I'm at work and at work. Nicole, real quick. There we go. Hey, Nicole. All right. Um, but I do those mundane rote behaviors because of that success I want to have, and that's that commitment. So let's dive in. Um, I know Becca, Amanda, Becca caught part of it. Amanda, I'm not really sure with Kaylee. Um, Jessica, and I know Nicole's at work right now um, trying to be a total rock star jumping on this. Um, who got to listen to Carl's Surge just now? Cool. So I want to just take a second and share some takeaways. Um, since I'm unmuted, I'll just go ahead and I'll say mine real quick, and then I'm going to mute myself and whoever wants to dive into a couple of those takeaways. Um, I want you to share your takeaway, and I also want to circle back with how does that takeaway apply to you and to Inspire Beauty and to your team or whatever you're trying to build right now, okay? So my first, um, I'll go through my takeaways real quick. So I love the first thing he said, above all else in this business right now, today, above all else, invite, invite, invite. You guys, I know it's the scary stuff. I know it's the thing you don't wanna do. I know it's the thing that it's like, it's that elephant in the room. It's that weight on your shoulders, right? but it's the thing that changes people's lives. None of you would be on this call right now if somebody didn't invite you, okay? Um, no, the, the women that are having amazing results in our challenge groups right now wouldn't be in those groups if somebody didn't invite them. So in, even though it's scary, and even though you might hear no, above all else, that is the, the thing that allows other people to experience this gift that we're all so fired up about, okay? Um, I also love, so how does that apply to Inspire Beauty? Well, that, imply, that applies directly to us, guys. That's got to be consistent. Consistent, consistent, consistent inviting is the only secret. I think Nicole hit the nail on the head today in her Facebook Live because she said she was really surprised when she got to Summit. Every coach said, all these top coaches, everyone she's like listening to, like, okay, they're going to give me the secret. They're going to tell me what I got to do right now to be in the top. What is it? And all of them said the four vital behaviors every single day. And that's it. I mean, really guys, it is that simple, but it's something that sometimes you don't want to do and you still have to do it anyway. Um, my other takeaway was, uh, from Kim Fitzpatrick. She said the triple threat M's and it got me certain. Well, she didn't say M's. She said movement, uh, your nutrition and your mindset, but I took it a step further and I thought we could switch nutrition into meals. And isn't that a cool concept? Movement, meals, and mindset. Like that's the triple threat we've got going on right now. We're not just gonna make you better healthy on the outside with moving. We're not just gonna make you healthy on the inside with your meals, but we're also going to change your mindset. So that the three M's I thought was really powerful and I've got my brain kind of like going around how can I get that going in a future challenge group. Um, 
We will talk about Team Cup here in a little bit, so uh, I'm not gonna even talk about that one right now. I will save that one for later. Those are my biggest takeaways from the thing. So anyone else want to jump in with some of their takeaways and how it applies to us right now? So I didn't get to hear the last part of the call. I was driving <laughs> and traffic in California sucks. Um, and I also didn't get to take many notes. Um, so the thing that really, I mean, really stuck out for me, especially with shift shop being the thing that's happening really right now in our businesses and really we're promoting that. And I am on day three and it's amazing. Just it's crazy. Um, but when um, Chris was talking about his markers and I've seen with the test group coaches that they would write their goals on their markers um, or just like family or whoever they're doing this for, they would write them on each of the four markers. There'd be a different person, a different goal. There'd be different things on there. And Chris shared his, which were really just inspiring to hear as a trainer's perspective. Um, Cause he wasn't thinking like how I would think like, towards you know my own personal goals he was thinking towards a trainer goal and that's what kept him pushing um and so I really feel like like I'm number one I'm going to be brainstorming tonight after I do shift shop um what my goal should be on my agility markers to keep me putting to keep going and committing to the program and all of that but I really think just having like just taking away having four main goals that are just you can't let down on them. They are non-negotiable um, and they are part of every day trying to get through what like the hard stuff, like because those work are so freaking hard. Um, I think that overall, like to me, like that kind of clicked as a way to really keep pushing forward in the business and pushing forward towards Team Cup, like just finding those, like, and it goes back to your whys because um, there's multiple whys, but really just trying to hone in on what those are and that will keep you going. I loved that. Um, and actually, I had that on my list of like action steps to take after Summit was to write on my markers. But I'm like, you know how I am. Ladies who are at Summit know how I am about my journal. And I shared with them that I was really OCD about what I should write on my first page. And then lo and behold, I wrote upside down in my journal. And that like broke my heart. So I'm like really being OCD right now about like, oh my gosh, but if I write a permanent marker, like, and then I want to write a new one. And so I'm like really stressing. So I'm like, I haven't done it yet, but I'm super excited. And Carl, Carl read off his as well. And they were just so cool. Um, Chris said, this is my moment. Celebrate their challenge. Show them their potential. He also put just, I am. And he said, when you say I am and whatever comes after that, you're setting that in stone. And so be careful about what you say that you are. And I love that. Um, and Carl's, I wrote two of them down, do it and finish it, help 10,000 people finish. And then I missed whatever other two he had said it was freezing on me, but, um, it's really cool. And I think that's a really fun bonus that we could add to our groups. And so guys, the more that like in this prep week right now too, do not discredit like what Becca's doing. I know Becca has a group that she's getting ready to start up right now. I'm doing my whole prep week on my event page. So if you're a part of that event page, use that also to share what's happening share that hey i you know snap a picture hey i wrote on my marker today this is my goal or this is my motivational quote um all of those things that you're doing in preparation are great things to pour into uh your challengers or potential challengers right to show them how different this is i love that anybody else other takeaways from the surge tonight Okay, so um, I'm going to just keep the ball rolling then. So let's get into game planning. Now, this is going to be like, this is not literally Brittany game planning and telling you things. This is a community affair. So I want everybody to get ready to unmute themselves at any point. You do not need permission, but we need to start game planning 
uh, not only just for the end of July and the launch of Shift Shop, and not just for August, but beyond. Let's start though with August because August is Team Cup month. And if you've never been a part of a Team Cup, the last Team Cup that was hosted was in February. A Team Cup is basically just a way to boost your business by being surrounded by people who are setting common goals as you. So a Team Cup is no, I mean, it's not for any other reason, but to just have fun while trying to uh, work your business, really. And there's fun incentives and prizes. Um, there's a, like a, I think it's a ship shop hoodie that's like super cute. There's a male and a female version. I'll post the gifts um, to the team page. Uh, not tonight, but I will post them sometime soon, but there's some pretty cute prizes. Um, but Team Cup, this is the thing I wanted to say that came from the surge, is that, uh, I believe it was Jessica, yeah, Jessica Nelson, she said that a lot of times people don't join Team Cup, or they join it, they're on fire for like two or three days, and then they fizzle out because they feel like they're letting the team down because they don't have success club points or because they're not inviting enough or because they, or because they, uh, you know, just whatever, whatever, you know, loop you've got going through your head about what you can and can't do, you're putting that on yourself. And so I want to have two team cup teams. I know Nicole has already stepped up to the plate to be the leader of one team cup team. I need one more leader because I want to do like what we did in February where we have two teams. Uh, each team is five people. So Nicole would be the leader and she would get four people on her team. And then we need one other leader and four people on that team. Is there anybody that's on the call right now that would love to step up and lead the second team? No experience necessary. I'll lead. Sounds okay. great. <laughs> okay, cool. The, okay, so it's Nicole against Becca. I love this. <laughs> um, so the only thing, and I'm going to just give this, like, I'm going to put it out there. I have always hated Team Cup for exactly the reason that I said a second ago, is that people fizzle out. People feel like they're not worthy. People, they will send you a weekly report of what success club points everyone has on the team. So, you know, you'll see each other's points. And then all of a sudden, it's like when Susie Q has zero points, all of a sudden she feels like she's not worthy and she shouldn't participate, which is, that is the lie that holds you back, okay? You gotta hear me on that. That is the lie that will hold you back in this business. There is no one, and I'm I was just talking with a prospect about this, there's no one on our team that's going to judge you for wanting to build a business, and there's no one on the team that's gonna judge you if you simply just wanna have your shakes and work out right? And everything else in between. The only one who I think ever judges us on the team is ourselves. We are our worst critic. And so I want you to know that on Team Cup, this is my expectation. And this goes for the leaders, and this will go for everybody else that's on Team Cups. My expectation is that you show up every day for one month. That's it. That's my expectation. You show up every day for one month. And what happens when you don't show up for one day? Well, I didn't meet Brittany's expectation. So I guess I'll just stop showing up for 29 more days. No, like now you're really pissing me off because you missed one day, show up for 29 more. You know what I mean? Like why? If you miss one day, missing 29 more does not help you. It just makes it worse, right? So if you miss one day and things happen and life happens or you didn't feel well or whatever, shake it off and show up the next day and rock the next 29 days, right? So that is my only expectation is that we show up to encourage each other. Doesn't matter what points we get. Doesn't matter if we hit our goal or not. That it, it's not, that's not the point of this. The point of this is to show up and better each other and support each other. Cool. Okay. So Nicole and Becca are going to lead this. I am going to uh, take it over to a separate thread with them to get them up and running on the team page so that we can get teams selected. Um, so we'll do that all outside of this call then. Cool. Then let's now mastermind guys. The last thing I want to do tonight is I want to come up with three team goals for us by end of 2017. Three goals for Inspire Beauty. By the end of 2017. Now these goals can be anything. They could be how many more uh, team members we add to our team. 
It could be uh, how many collective success club points we have before the year is over. It could be how many workouts we've logged in the challenge tracker app and shakes we've logged until the year's over. Um, it, it could be how many personal development books or minutes we've logged of reading before the year is over. Uh, I mean, the sky, you guys, is the limit. So I want you to brainstorm right now. If anybody can think of anything, you can either type it in the chat or you can come on and say it. But this is gonna be the last part of our call tonight is, is game planning some goals. And I wanna hear them from you. So I have a, I have a thought, a brainstorm. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not really, um, not tangible, tangible is the wrong word, but it's not measurable in like n numerical form, I guess. But I think one of the things I've just loved after coming back from Summit and our friends that didn't get to go is just like their overwhelming response when like <laughs> people are putting their heart out and like just people that I haven't, like I feel like obviously I love everybody on our team, but I haven't directly talked with many of them. I think just feeling that response, not only in our team page, but also off of our team page and like just having everybody like loving each other's statuses and you know, all those sorts of posts. Like I think a goal for me is just for us as teammates and of course, whoever adds in, but to become a lot closer and get to know each other better because I feel like if we really start to like love each other's like stories and you know things we don't know and that's so hard over the internet but really like start embracing each other and showing that love through social media i really do think that will attract more people to our community because they see the community every day when this person who they have no mutual friends with you know what i mean like is commenting on somebody's post from across the country like well like why are they such good friends with you i don't even know them but i have 200 other mutual friends with them like i just feel like I don't know that just I just love the sense of community that I felt this weekend and then also just right immediately especially after um, Summit and I just really would love that to keep going because I really do think that will encourage and draw more people in to us I kind of so I, I love that and I feel it too and I think everybody's feeling it I am wondering how we can like, so we did Val Pals in February, right? Um, I attempt at, <laughs> I attempt as best as I can to do some uh, local events, right? But that only hits the local people. Um, tank tops that we've created have, I mean, th these are silly things, but these are things that have created a culture and a tribe that people are like, what is that that they're doing over there and turn their heads, right? Um, so what are some things I think that stuff along those lines would continue to help that? Um, is there anything that you guys can think of? Any sort of team building activities? I mean, close through a screen that, that would help this? I mean, honestly, why don't we just have some sort of Zoom that's not necessarily business related, but just like, hey, let's have a wine night virtually together and like talk about whatever. I don't know. just. I wish I had you all like in my house. <laughs> I could cook dinner for you or something. And I know that's like impossible to do right now at Summit. <laughs> it will be more possible, but I don't know, just something, because obviously we're all here for Beachbody, sort of like that is the core, like we're coaches together and for different reasons and different levels. But at the same time, like I don't feel like I know everybody's story. I don't know everybody personally and as well as now I really wish I I did and so maybe just a way like a social or something that we could just talk outside of the business stuff and just the fun you know whatever so everybody feels included especially those that aren't you know that are just discount or just hobby you know not really trying to push the business but also can feel that community and that's why they're here anyway absolutely would you do you think Becca I mean you were just at summit do you think that Summit is for people who aren't running the business either? Yeah, I mean, you you learn, I mean, even just what you shared about Charlie, like, just how much that has impacted how he does day-to-day -day things. Like, <laughs> there are so many takeaways that don't apply to business that 
it's just incredible. Like all of my main takeaways, like that I tried to share today were not necessarily about the business. It was more about how I transformed and it, like that will assist with the business, but it's not like, it doesn't have to, like I could take that back to my day job. I could take that to my color guard kiddos. Like that doesn't mean it has to go to beach body, but you know, so it definitely is for everybody for sure. Absolutely. I love that you say that though, because, um, you know, that's one of the things too, I think getting some of those coaches who, again, it's that, mm -hmm. it's that lie that sometimes we tell ourselves that I can't go to summit or I can't go to, I can't get on this zoom call because I didn't sell a challenge pack this month or I'm not running challenge groups. So I'm not, I'm not allowed to go to super Saturday, you know, like those things that people sometimes maybe tell themselves, uh, that no one's ever really said on our team page, but maybe it's just a feeling they get, right? Um, but I love the virtual wine night. I love, uh, even if we did, cause we could even do, I've seen it before too, where like every Saturday at 7 a.m. Central time, uh, we're gonna go on Zoom on this line. If you log in, you log in, if not, whatever, but we're gonna work out. You do whatever workout you're doing, but we're all going to be doing it on zoom. We're not even watching each other. We're just doing it together. So we know, you know, I've seen that too. So maybe like we, we start planning stuff like that too. I love that. I want to keep creating that community. I agree. Okay. I'm going to curb. We're just brain dumping guys. So I'm going to, we can either continue brain dumping on that same topic. If you have anything or continue brain dumping on more goals for us this year to close this year out strong. Looks like Nicole might've had one in the chat. Oh, about success partners. Yes. And I even wrote it down, but I didn't say it. Okay. Um, success partners. Yes. I so agree. And I love that Nicole and uh, Becca took the lead on just creating that for each other. Um, do you think that that's something that, okay. I was talking to Charlie about this the other day. I'm not a matchmaker and I'm not going to like be like, okay, right now, Jessica and Kaylee need to be success partners. And Amanda, Brittany, you're going to be success partners and like force people to be together. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to like do that. But I, I've also towards coaches suggested, Hey, you should talk to this coach. They would probably love running a challenge group with you. Or, Hey, you should talk to this coach. So there is that fine line of, um, you know, I've, I've, said this to people before and, and implied the importance and the benefit. What do you think Becca or Nicole was the turning point for you that, you know, made you guys just decide that that was really important for you. And maybe that's something we could then share with the team. I think for me, like, cause I reached out to Nicole about it. Um, just the fact we had gone through the same experience together. And I feel like we took away the same goals. Like it was crazy. Cause it's like, it's like, okay, we're just success partners. And the next day I texted her. I'm like, my crazy goal is I want to be a two star diamond by next summit and walk across the stage. And she's like, that's literally my same goal. Like, I just feel like it worked out really well because we're very similarly minded. I know not everybody has, you know, the same goals, mm -hmm. but even just like, I don't know if there's a way to just kind of like have people share, you know, like where they want to go, like share their goals. And then that way, when everybody shares their goals, they can be like, Oh, Hey, you know, I relate to so-and-so like, I feel like we're going the same path. And kind of that way it might naturally happen if there's, you know, enough people that are wanting to go a certain way or they feel like they can relate to each other. Cause I think that's, at least to me, that's why I reach out to Nicole. It's like, I think we can relate. I think we can push each other. I think we really like hit the ground running together. Yeah. No, I love that. And it's hard too, because it's, I, I would venture to say that there's sort of like a vulnerable private part about it too. Um, where it's like, if somebody were to write down on the team page, you know, these are my goals. And then somebody else says, Oh my gosh, those are my goals too. You want to be my success partner. And then they're like, uh, not really. <laughs> Like, you know, there's that, like, I didn't get picked for dodgeball kind of feel, right? Um, so. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And honestly, that's why I feel like if we become closer as people, because I've already, I already know Nicole, and we haven't gotten to hang out as much as we have, like, this summit, but, like, just knowing who she is helped me make that, like, you know, make me want to 
ask her that. And so even if it's not as just like blatant, like I want a success partner, throw up all everything I want somebody else to know and then put it out publicly. Like if we did get to know each other better, like I saw where her goals were going through the weekend and it was like, that's where I'm going to. If you know, like if people started getting to know each other and see like, Oh, that's why they're doing that. My why is so similar you know, like just finding something that they can relate to, but we can't really do that until we know each other. Um, and I think that's pretty key. So it's, that's, that's a big thing for us then for the rest of this year is how do we get to know each other better? And I think we are starting to dive into that as a team. I think organically, it's just starting to really happen. I feel that momentum, but how can we um, encourage more of it too? Okay, cool. I love it. It says that we have three minutes left, guys. Any other brain dumps for goals? This is also something that if you're like, if you think of something later, you can always send it to the team page or text me. But right now, let's get as many out as we can before it kicks us out. I guess one for at least now starting in August, I'd love for both team cups to be successful. And like, I know one of the main ones is just everybody hits success club five or has success club on, points on the board. Like, I think that'd be really cool to be able to help each other get to that. I think that'd be a cool goal for everybody. Yeah. I love that. Writing that down. And then, you know, just the momentum of that, we could take that and we could even dial that up to, okay, if everyone hits success club five on the team in August, what does that look like then in September? What does that look like for October, November, December? What does that look like in total before 2017 is over? Um, and again, these are points and the incentives are fun and it's awesome, right? But the reality is those are lives change. And that's what I shared today when I was sharing, you know, Jessica and I have two points on the board right now for the month. And, um, but that's, two people whose lives are being transformed right now. Um, and it's really powerful when you start to look at it like that. So if everybody on the team hit SC5, well really that's SC6 because five is impossible now. So that means there's three, pe three people have, whose lives are potentially going to be changed times the 10 people. That's 30 people in August that we collectively could impact. That's pretty impressive, right? Um, so when we put it like that and shift our mindset uh, to who we're helping, I think that it becomes really powerful. Okay, it says I have less than a minute. Anything else, guys? I really appreciate you guys being on. I really hope you know that from the bottom of my heart. Seriously, uh, appreciate you guys taking your time out of your evening tonight. Uh, I know there's just been so much information being thrown at you and lots of expectations to be on these calls. Um, so thank you guys for joining in on that. Anything else? All right, my friends. Well, I want to keep brainstorming goals. Start, keep thinking of them, even if it's just your own personal goals, okay? Um, love you all. I'm going to stop the recording and end the meeting so that we don't get cut off. See ya.